Musasaurus is a very, very well-known sauropodomorph, meaning it's not quite a sauropod that would have been walking around on all fours, but we know it really well. We have a bunch of individuals of different ages and some nests with embryos, also very, very young ones. So we have a good understanding of how its growth would have actually happened. And now there's another species of sauropodomorph that is almost as equally well known. Qianlong Shouhu is the new species, known from three adults and five clutches of eggs, some of which contained embryos. So it helps to fill in a lot of gaps in the evolution of sauropodomorphs towards sauropodomorpha. And that's because Qianlong is much closer to sauropoda, the group of, you know, what we normally think of as sauropods, as opposed to things that were earlier like Musasaurus. Coming from the early Jurassic of China, its eggs are actually the earliest known evidence of leathery eggs in dinosaurs. However, there was a paper a few years ago that also did suggest, hey, based on what we know of other animals and other dinosaurs that were around, potentially the first dinosaur eggs were leathery. They just didn't have any super earlier ones to be able to compare that with. But now we do, and these authors now also are going, hey, the first dinosaur eggs, probably leathery. This is big because one of the authors on the first paper actually mentioned that one of the authors on this new paper had already mentioned, oh no, I don't believe that the first dinosaur eggs were leathery. And now they're on the same side because that's how science works. You change your mind in light of new evidence. You just need to test the evidence and make sure it's robust. Unfortunately for the phylogenetics, they didn't actually put an image of the phylogeny in the non-formatted paper right now, so hopefully there will be one later. But when they tested it, they did find it as sister species to Unanosaurus, which is really, really close to the base of Sauropoda. In fact, it's just outside of that group. I mean, this animal would have been very, very similar to some of the first sauropods, and not just sauropodomorphs. It was a sauropodomorph as well, but just closer to that more specific group. So it's really, really good for helping us understand how some of those reproductive changes did happen in sauropods because we do have some good understanding of sauropod breeding. And this is largely due to certain places having thousands of eggs potentially because there's just flat plains that got covered with a flood when a ton of different sauropods all laid their eggs there. The eggs are also interesting for another reason though, despite being leathery, and that's because of their thickness. Thick eggs are very common in sauropods because in general they want to have relatively large babies that can grow up faster as opposed to much smaller ones. So it is nice to see that. But also when you're looking at them more microscopically, you can see these little cones called mammillary cones. These are much more common in things like sauropod eggs than they are in other types of dinosaur eggs. Meaning again, this is really showing support with being very good representation of early sauropod reproduction. It's fantastic to see this kind of thing and from a whole new species. And finally, on the embryos, their position before hatching, because some of them were fairly close to hatching, is somewhat between that of birds and crocodilians, which makes sense. The sauropods would have been between birds and crocodilians. So just one more piece of evidence that, yes, birds are dinosaurs coming from what potentially led to some of the largest animals to ever walk the planet, which I think is just a little bit funny and helps to show how sometimes if you're looking at the right thing or find the right fossil, you can tell a lot about how evolution might have worked.